Good morning, it's Tom Christie back in the workshop, and this is session two of carving a preening hen mallard. And in the previous session, we did some basic cutout and did some planning. Today, I'm going to start with the bandsaw and remove a little bit of material to take the edges off of this block so I don't have to grind all of that off. You can use a, a draw knife to do that work. I'm going to do my bandsaw as much as I can, but we're going to have to be careful with this tail sticking out here. There's a lot of angles going on um, and we don't want to remove any wood uh, in critical places. So we'll start there. Speaking of that, I got some good feedback from some novice carvers that the preening hen mallard is kind of an intimidating project. Uh, and I get that, especially when you're beginning. And so I appreciate that feedback. I'll use that feedback. I think uh, we should probably put a session together, some videos together, just on a basic gunner, uh, because that's where most people start carving. And that's what we're trying to do here is encourage people to pick up the hobby of decoy carving and get the enjoyment out of it that I've gotten. And uh, also the feedback was, you know, when you're starting out, you don't have thousands of dollars worth of tools and equipment, grinding equipment, etc. So I may focus some time on hand tool techniques for a simple gunner um, in another session. I can't promise when that's going to be, but I did want to let you know I appreciate that feedback. We'll finish this series uh, for the more advanced carvers. And hopefully this will be, you can pick up things that will encourage you in the beginning carving stages as well. So let's get started. So we're going to focus some time and attention on band sawing corners. So I'm going to strike myself a little guideline here. On this decoy, I've got some leg nubs here. So I got to be careful I don't bandsaw right through that area and remove material that I'm going to want to have later. So I'm going to stop right there, do the same thing on this side. This is just a little cut to kind of round the bottom somewhat, but I'm going to stop there. I may pick it up back here again. And then in general, I'm going to have to be real careful. And that's why I put this here to not remove material there, but I'm going to try to get material off the edges here. And there's quite a bit of material over on this side that we can remove, hopefully, with a couple of cuts on the bandsaw. Okay, I've got the table set at a 30 degree angle. And uh, you want to make sure the decoy is flat on the table and hold it flat on the table as we make these smaller cuts and just take your time keep your hands away from the blade as always and just follow that guideline around and as i said we're getting close to that leg stub so i'm gonna leave that alone flip it around and do the same thing on the opposite side again avoiding the leg stub area can't emphasize enough take your time don't force the bandsaw because uh, that's that's when the blade may pull off or now we're going to avoid these areas and just try to remove those bigger sections that I've X'd and make sure that we don't cut any wood away from the neck area you can see I've got the side of the decoy again flat against the table and that's key and keeping my hands out of the way of the blade. Especially on this cut, again, keep it firm on the table. Keep your hand away from the blade. I'm just trimming off some more, keeping my thumb clear over there out of the way. And that's in case the, the blade might snag the decoy and try to pull it down, which can happen. And... Uh, you want to make sure your hands are out of the way. Again, I'm flat against the table. 
and go slow on these cuts. But we can take off quite a bit of wood here and not have to grind that off later. As I approach the back, I'm pulling out again so that we don't cut away any wood near the tail area. I'm going to take another cut at a slightly different angle just to peel off some more of that wood. And you may want to do this work with a draw knife. The bandsaw is just one way to do it. Now I can take a little bit more wood off in the breast area and just kind of peel away some wood that I won't have to carve out later. Same on the opposite side. Don't, don't want to go too deep on these because you can always take off material. You can't add it back. So that gives you a view of kind of the that's about as much as I'm going to do on that on the bandsaw. This, uh, in this next session, I want to remove some of this material uh, on top and below the tail. Since the tail is splayed out, there's quite a bit of wood in this area. And rather than grind all of that out, I'm going to use a coping saw to kind of rough cut that out. And uh, I, I wanted to show you this. My carving buddies will probably laugh at me. But we talked about when you're first starting out, what's a good way to save money? This, these are just plumbing fittings that you can get at Menards or, or Lowe's. Just a flange with a half inch nipple. And it, it makes a great tool holder. Just screw that to the bottom and use your bench vise. And you can maneuver it around in a lot of different positions. And it does what I need for the amount of time that I carve in a vise. Normally, when I power carve, I'm holding on to the decoy myself. I don't have it in, in a fancy vise. So I'm not poo-pooing great vices, but this is just a quick way to, to do that without a lot of investment. Okay, I'm just following my guidelines using the coping saw. Follow those lines down. One thing I want, want you to keep in mind where the rump meets the tail, so we don't want to dig out too much wood there. But I'm going to take a cut here and then maybe come out here and cut that and remove all of this stuff and get it out of the way. Now I've repositioned the bird and going from the top down. Take your time with a coping saw so that you don't break the blade. but it doesn't take much time at all to get a, a big chunk of wood out of, out of the way. I don't have to grind all of that out and in about a minute I was able to just remove that. I'll do the same thing over here and then I'll work on the section under the tail. Okay, I made that cut underneath on this cut, this is why you want to know where the primaries are. I don't want to be going hacking off primary material, so I'm going to come outside of that, cut down in this direction. And on, underneath here, I've kind of sketched in roughly where the underside of the tail and the rump is going to be so that when I make these cuts I'm not taking off too much material here. I just want to remove out here. Just a quick shot of the underside of the tail. Leaving plenty of width here because we're going to want to grind a cup into this so leave three-eighths to a half of an inch there. 
So with those uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight quick cuts, we've taken out a lot of material and started to define the tail to the point now where it's reasonable to grind material around there to, to finish the shape of it. Just one other note, you can see I've kicked this side down like we talked about. It's over to the side and cupped down in that preening position. Now that the coping work is done, we can just remove this. Set that aside and we can hand hold this for the grinding part. Okay, just another quick tip. I've got a central dust collection system. It's a Powermatic turbo cone. I'm not selling their equipment, but that's what I use. And I've attached flexible hose to that. So I've had the dust collection over here on my bandsaw and I can quickly just move it over to the grinding bench. And now I've got dust collection here for my grinding. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is um, kind of define where this big tertial is. And uh, you can see it's raised up. So I wanna remove the wood around that tertial on both sides to kind of get it out of the way and define where that tertial is going to lie before we start removing wood elsewhere. Um, once I do that, and this is a, this is a fine saber tooth burr, and I, I like fine because it goes a little slower, a little more control. This has teeth on the end of it, which is nice in, a, in an area like this where you're trying to define uh, a line or a shelf. And then I'll switch over to the green saber tooth burr with a round bullet nose and begin just removing wood in general, rounding areas. Okay, I'm using that three quarter inch cylindrical fine saber tooth burr and going along this edge of this tertial very carefully and slowly you can see my dust collection's working well, but I still have a respirator on because it, it won't catch everything. Depending on the angle of the grind that you have to make, uh, it'll throw material in your face periodically. So it's, it's a good idea to have a respirator on. Any shelf area like that, you really have to take your time and go slow so the burr doesn't... Uh, catch the edge of the shelf and now I'm flipping it around and carefully going back in the other direction and to find the other edge of that big tertial. These grinding videos I'm not gonna uh, have a complete view of every grind that I do. I don't think it's worth your time to sit there and watch me remove wood. And grinding takes time. So I'm just gonna try it to show the major steps and then we'll show the progression as we go. Now I'm gonna start taking the edge of that tertial down to begin to pull it into a rounded shape. Now I've changed to uh, a coarser burr, the green burr, and it's a bullet shape, and I'm gonna do some general rounding. You can see where that neck is coming out. I wanna be careful I don't take too, too much wood out of there. In that preening position, we wanna leave that pathway for the neck up to the breast and remove the material beside it on both sides. So now I'm just using the, the coarser burr because it cuts wood a little quicker and beginning to remove wood and generally round things. So 
So I'm beginning to define that neck path down to the breast in that preening position here. And for the next series in the video, I'm going to speed it up and not have a ton of commentary, just so you can kind of see things as they progress. But just know that I've uh, sped the video up and I'm not really carving that fast. That's important. Just using this green burr to round things in general and hog off wood. Just being careful to not take out too much wood because we have detailed carving to do in these areas. Be beginning to round the breast and then define the other edge of the neck there. Remember that neck is pulled back and the head is going to be angled back in a preening position. So we want to define that neck as it uh, comes out of the breast and is jacked back in that preening position. That, that should be enough video. I mean, I'm just going to be working this and rounding things in general. And then we'll come back and take a look at it. Okay, I wanted to pause and just take a look at what we've got. I've been using the, uh, the coarse saber tooth burr just to kind of round things in general. You can see I've begun to establish, okay, where is that neck going to curl back? And I've got a little separation there in the breast that we're going to want to define later, but just trying to get an idea. Again, this is not final carving by any stretch of the imagination, but just kind of define where that's going to lay in there. I want to work now, before I get too far on rounding, begin to define the back end of the bird here. So I'm going to use um, this saber tooth burr again to begin to edge, define the edges of the primaries on both sides. And I'll use a little finer uh, burr with the uh, Marathon Yeswine Grinder, another little teardrop drop shape burr to begin to define where those wing tips are and then take that down and also begin to define this area and take and remove material out of this area. So those are the next steps. You can see I've kind of left the leg nub material there on both sides. So it's very much a process of going at it slowly, removing wood so you don't have to, uh, so you don't dig into areas that uh, you want to leave intact. So next set of videos will be working to define this tail area on the underside and the top side along with the primaries. Going to use a cylindrical fine burr and very cautiously begin to remove wood. Again, that's right on a shelf, a drop off area, so you need to go slowly so the burr doesn't quickly wrap around that edge. And you're kind of going against the grain here, so again, slow is better. taking that down to where it joins up with the tail feathers below. I'm going to speed up the video again so you can see the progress but not uh, take too much time doing it. I'm 
Now I'm going to work that other side and define the edge of that primary. Again, this is, this is sped up a little, so I'm not grinding this fast, but you can see that other primary is down below, and we need to keep that angle in mind as we're grinding away material on this side. So we leave enough that uh, the primary can come out the other side. Now I'm going to use the smaller cylindrical bit and define that area between the primaries very carefully. A little V-notch that goes between the primaries and then begin to define that crossed area. So I'm taking that lower primary down to a lower level. And then that primary is angled down, both of them are, towards the side pocket. So we need to re remove material on an angle there. Just using that smaller burr to work down into the tail fe feather area and further define that primary as it goes down towards the, the other part of the wing. Now I've changed bits and I'm going with the uh, bullet-nosed fine burr and I'm going to take material off between the wing tips there and the tail feathers. Remove that material. Begin rounding that area. There is going to be a little bit of the rump tail covert feathers showing there so I don't want to gouge too much material out and then I'm also removing material to further define the top of the tail feathers there and blend those in. Working on the top of the tail there. It's just further defining that covert area where the covert feathers meet the, the tail feathers. Just penciling that in so I don't forget that there are some covert feathers in that area and I don't gouge too deep. And now I'm just using that same bit to begin rounding the big tertial feathers. And beginning to round that area and define that area where the primary flight feathers go into the side pocket on both sides. And I'm going back to the cylindrical burr and going to use that to further define the, the rump area under the tail and also the underside of the tail feathers. Taking that rump down a little bit, removing material and pulling it into the side. So we didn't get all that material removed with the coping saw cuts, so now we can just clean it up with this burr and round that area under the rump and then flip the decoy over and use it to thin up that tail and kind of create the cupped shape that we want in the tail as you look at it from the back. All right, I think we'll call that a wrap on segment two, uh, roughing out the hen mallard, the preening hen mallard body. We've got a lot of the rough shapes established, and in the next segment, we'll begin to refine those uh, and remove more wood, but a lot of wood has been removed this morning. Hope you're enjoying these and getting value out of it. If you are, hit the like button and the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed. That way, 
you get updated content as I continue to add uh, videos to the to my YouTube channel. So until the next segment, Tom Christie signing off. Have a great day.